All right, welcome everybody to another segment, another installment of the Potluck Leadership and Coaching Virtual Series. I am your host, Ken Avrer, and I am fired up, uh, probably more so than the other segments, and that's not to take away from other segments with some great people, uh, really accomplished people, but none of them actually threw me touchdown passes, and none of them actually uh, made me a better football player, a better athlete, uh, and, uh, which is ironic because a lot of people see this guest as a great athlete who got away with being a great athlete and probably doesn't get enough credit for the skill and his ability to become a student of the game of professional football. Mm -hmm. uh, played in the CFL for a bunch of years. I don't want to give you too many hints because it's going to be obvious after a while that you know who it is. Uh, but he was a teammate of mine in Ottawa with the Rough Riders and with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And uh, boy, when he showed up, he changed the game in the Canadian Football League in a lot of ways. Uh, more so maybe than, Dim, than Doug Flutie did. I just gave you the hint. There it is. Our guest is <laughs> Hall of Fame quarterback, Damon Allen. D, what's up? Hey, man, it's great to be on, be on your virtual uh, coaching. Is, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And, um, I mean, it's nice to, you know, to be creative in a sense of how do you still get messaging out and all yeah. those things, even when we're quarantined. So, you know, you never stop coaching. And I see you, that you're doing the same. You never stop coaching as, a, as an athlete or as a parent. And mm -hmm. when, even when you leave the game, because I think it's you almost owe the game to give the knowledge that you capture over the years and share it with someone else. That's right. That's right. And I was raised that way to, to share, to give, yeah. not to hoard your, your, your experiences and to share them. And I mean, I think that's one of the, the reasons why, you know, I get into coaching in a sense, you know, yeah. at the amateur high school and whoever desires to have that kind of information about the, especially the sport of football, um, especially the Canadian football league is because 24, 23 years of information and been yeah. to and been in all situations, you know, there, there are experiences that I take hold to, um, and don't take for granted, you yeah. know, you know, and so it's really nice to, uh, to be able to share. Anytime you have a team meeting, any kind of meeting with athletes, there's always the meeting part, but it's always fun the first couple of minutes before the meeting because you get to hang out with the guys. So That's let's right. do that. Okay. I got a couple of people waiting here to join us. You have no idea who they are. Okay. <laughs> so there's one and there's two. And I'm waiting on a third. Ladies and gentlemen, second round draft pick out of the UW, <laughs> Lonzel Hill. <laughs> Mo Hill. Mo Hill in the house. What up, Mo? <laughs> <laughs> Mo Mo Hill. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. No, Boy, our Mr. other guest. Uh, Mr. Who, uh, Post Corner. Who do we got that's here? Mr. Post Corner. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Post Corner. And run that in route, boy. Hey, run, hey, run, run that, that bicycle. bicycle. Talk about a route right runner. Bicycle. Who just joined us? Craig Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by Puma. He wore that headband to bed. He wore those headbands to bed, making sure he was going to get paid for wearing all that Puma stuff that he wore back in the day. Or no fear. All you guys are hooked up. I never got a sponsorship deal. Two guys, fantastic receivers. Uh, Craig Ellis, obviously, a fantastic resume in the Canadian Football League and uh, teammate with, with Damon and, and Mo Hill, teammate in Hamilton as well. Now, Mo, were you teammates in Ottawa with Damon as well? No, not in Ottawa, just in no, Hamilton. Just, just okay. in Hamilton. Okay. So let's just let's get into this and find out what you guys are up to. Mo Hill, you start off. What are you up to these days? I know you're in Seattle. <clears throat> well, right now, yeah, I am in Seattle, man. Hey, how you doing there, Ellis? Uh, hey, I'm in hey, Seattle, hey, man. I'm running. Uh, I'm well. Um, I'm actually doing Mo Hills right now. Mo helping individuals learn life skills. Uh, my mm -hmm. organization with my wife. Uh, also, she's uh, she's a school teacher, uh, Rainy yeah. Beach High School, and I am. Uh, uh, working with, with uh, foster youth, so I'm, wow. you know, what they call I'm. I'm trying to pay it forward. I'm. Uh, we're doing well. We're being blessed and trying to bless others, man. And um, that's what this uh, this world needs, uh, especially in uh, today's times. Let's get down to Craig Ellis. Everybody in the stadium knew he was going to get the ball on second and ten, but they couldn't <laughs> do a damn thing about it. What are you up to, see? Now you're you're in the West Coast. Where are you? I'm in, I'm in Edmonton, Alberta, Ken. How you okay. doing, bro? You look good with that hat on now. Hey, Mo, where's, <laughs> where's Mo at? Is he, uh, where's, is he in Canada still? He's in Seattle. I'm in oh, Seattle. Okay, all right. All right, so, yeah. hey, hey um, Mo, I have a foundation down in California. It's called Alumni in Action. 
Okay. We're doing some, we're doing some stuff with the uh, inner city uh, kids. Uh, I got a pretty good committee together. Uh, I had some help down there. Um, we're trying to put together a tournament, a fashion league tournament that can make the acclimation from uh, junior high school to high school a little, little less uh, uh, um, for the ninth graders coming in. Because I look back when I was coming in playing varsity three years, you know, coming from junior Bantams going straight to varsity, it was a big change, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Humongous. I so played hockey. We're trying to alleviate that transformation, making it not such a great deal, but also give the coaches to get a chance to look at the kids coming in, give the kids a chance to understand the program that they're going into. Mm-hmm. Here's the interesting thing, and you guys all answer the question. I'll start with Damon because we were discussing earlier before I introduced Mo and Craig, and we're waiting on a third guest. I'm not again. The guys I picked up, the guys I connected with, they're not what you call getting the practice or meetings on time type guys. They'll get there, <laughs> Coach. Don't worry, I'll be there, Coach. I'm just on a different clock. <laughs> and a third guy is one of those guys. If he shows up, I hope he does. You'll you'll know. You go. Oh yeah. Okay. Definitely on his own clock. But uh, talking about a leadership coaching and when you leave the sport and the realization that you know so much more than you actually thought you knew and it's incumbent of you to want to give it to somebody else mm -hmm. damon well i think i think it's uh it's very important because it, when you when you look back it's been it was done for you yeah and so with that experience understanding that man okay there's professionals and people i've talked to uh, other coaches i've talked to and mm -hmm. growing up that were sharing information that would help me down the road. And so it's only natural to me to want to share the same kind of information to, especially not only kids uh, that, you know, probably need it as well, but at the same time you have the kids that, man, they desire. And I've always looked for kids that, that are, that desire to want to be better, get better, and then do the necessary things to learning. And so sharing, uh, you know, like, you know, when you're brought up the way we, I was brought up among my brothers, I mean, it's all about community, right? Giving back to your community. And so that it fits along those lines. And, and that's really the, the biggest difference is you're just putting yourself out there and put yourself, making yourself available for young people who desire to want to get better at the game of football. Mohill? Damon said, uh, said very well. It's giving back. Um, they're calling it paying forward, but it is giving back. Someone uh, took you and taught you. Mm -hmm. Someone right. taught you the uh, the ins and outs, the trades of the game, uh, with your attitude uh, as well as your your talents. Mm -hmm. And if we can give those back, just a portion of what we have, um, those who aren't in that position to be around professional athletes. Uh, you know, myself and Damon, we grew up in a in a household of, of professional athletes, and there was nothing. That's all we knew. Yeah. There's others who don't have those opportunities, and if we can let let them touch us, let them let them see mm -hmm. what we're doing, and let them and, and make it personal, man. And and they see I can do that too. Yeah. You know, and that is so that is uh, more powerful than X's and O's. Right. It sure is. So then, uh, Mo, you have that, your dad plays in the NFL. Damon, we know your family connection with Marcus and everything else, but Craig, where does it come from? Where does it extend from you where you want to give? Or where does that come from? You know what, Ken? Um, I come from South Central Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, uh, all my brothers was in jail. And uh, that's where I was probably destined to go, too. Right. Especially on my path. I wasn't fortunate to have someone to um, mentor me. So that's why I'm in the position I am right now right. to mentor others. And that's probably one of the reasons why I'm giving back because for a person like myself to mm -hmm. make it to South Central Los Angeles and to be friends with my boy dog and, and to have played against Mo and all these other great athletes, I was very blessed and fortunate. And uh, yeah. I don't thank myself. I, I thank the Lord and Jesus Christ because he pays the way. 
And I didn't realize that until I accepted Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this. Uh, first off, would, would you have played Cornelius Reddick, Tyrone Pope? Oh, yeah. I just, they were I just, younger than me. They were younger than me. Isn't that the beauty of Facebook, though, connected because a bunch of guys that we played football with, Corn Reddick, Mo, and, and uh, I think you probably knew him maybe even in Ottawa, and, and Damon, you knew him. But uh, I want to look at it from I a reverse him, perspective. I in Edmonton. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. Let yes, me have, I did. My but dad. I grew, up, I grew up with Warren Moon, and my okay. neighborhood. We had we had lots of talent. Uh, Ken, just the other day, I posted something on Facebook. Uh, uh, UNV, ULV, and San Diego State, where I went, San Diego okay. State. And when I looked at the roster, you know, I saw uh, Durando Cunningham, yeah. you know, Ray Kraus. Uh, right. Um, you know, I saw all these guys. I'm like, wow. You know, and then I, I, I turn over to Oklahoma State and San Diego State, and I see uh, uh, Barry Sanders and uh, Jim Jones. And then, then I turn over to Colorado State, I see Richie Hall, Les Brown. And then, you know, it's it, you look back in your college, all the guys that I played against in professional, they all played college too, majority of them. And that's the that's the good and and we're not just players, we're brothers. Yeah. We played with each other or played against each other for so many years. I never got a chance to play with my boy Dog though. And, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, they they lucky I never played with my boy Dog. <laughs> I would have probably cost 150. <laughs> hey, Damon, here's a true. I want to get to something. I want to segue to it, but while I have a story in my head, I was here in Ottawa and Kyle Hall went down with an injury, and I was the backup free safety. I think Rick Warman was the quarterback, Craig, with yep. you guys in Edmonton. And uh, so I had to play free safety, and I was, I was so deep, you couldn't see me in the game film. You're right, right. But Craig, <laughs> Craig ran a dig and he caught the ball and he was taken off and he decided he was going to step out of bounds. But I had already run like 50 yards to try to catch his mama. So I was like, I want to give him a shot. I'm about five <laughs> yards out of bounds. He had already given the ball to the ref. I know, but yeah. He already I, gave the ball I, to the I ref, was making his bed back to the huddle. And I still gave him a shot. <laughs> I remember that game, Ken, though. If I remember that game, Ken, you guys, you guys won. Because uh, do we miss a field goal at the end, Damon? Don't, no. Craig, you, Craig, you're lying. You know why you lost. You know why any team <laughs> no, loses, no, no, no. any team no, that no, loses no, in no, Ottawa no. loses for one reason. Okay, Ottawa might have been good, but we all no, know the right. worst the, the worst opponent any team came in the city had was Hull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are in Hull. <laughs> you're in Hull. Hey, you Four know, Craig Morgan. But dog, you remember that game where Blake Marshall? We got down to the field goal. I think we missed the field. goal. What, what yeah. was that game? Because it was a I, shootout. I, I remember. And Edmonton yeah, always I had trouble five, playing I think Ottawa. I five touchdowns in that game. <laughs> I know. Eddie, downtown Eddie Brown. Downtown, downtown Eddie, Eddie Brown. Killed my boy Enos. Enos killed my boy Enos. Yeah. The score was like um, fifty. The score was like fifty to forty-seven, something like that. Yeah. I know. It was, down at the end, we should have kept. That's what uh, your boy Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. true. So let me let me ask you this question. Um, my dad played professional baseball in minor league ball, and he was an Ottawa kid, nine brothers, one sister. His dad thought he was playing football. Dad wasn't even, even close to being connected. So there my dad flies down to Tampa, and he's playing baseball, and some of his teammates were Richie Allen and uh, Pete Rose. And right. So pretty, pretty good athletes. Richie Allen, he said, it was pound, until that point, pound for pound, was the best athlete he'd ever seen. And – uh, there's my dad, homesick, Canadian, and these guys have never seen a Canadian. And the team had said, well, what can we do to help you adjust? And he said, well, you know, I really, my family's really not invested. Well, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a wife? He said, I have a girlfriend. So they flew my mom down to Tampa. Now, Damon and Mo, you know this, but Craig, you probably don't, that, that my grandfather is black and my mom is mulatto. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so my mom had Come on, to, Come my on, mom had to die here. Bro? Yeah, but and my mom dyed her hair blonde so they could live together and they got married in Tampa. So there was a significant adjustment. What was the big thing for you guys coming from the States? Because you had the USA perspective, and all of a sudden you come to Canada and it's only a border, but it's a completely different world in a lot of ways. Did that make up make the experience for you as a football player coming to Canada unique? Well, I think I can, I can okay. speak on that because I think one of this that really helped me is the fact that I played in the, the PCAA 
And it was the number one passing conference in uh, college football. And so um, I came from a pro style offensive yeah. uh, scheme. And so I was well versed on uh, triangle reading, passing game and all those things. And so right. what my biggest adjustment was what you could do with that extra guy, the 12th yeah. man. And so that was really my adjustment and also the um, the flow of the motioning and all those things that I had to adapt with uh, as far as um, uh, my cadence and all this stuff to make sure that it flows naturally so you don't, you know, create uh, offsides and stuff like that. And so yeah. there was just minor adjustment uh, for me, but it's very difficult if you're a quarterback and you come from like a running style, you come from yeah. Oklahoma before yeah. like J.C. Watts and now all of a sudden, you know, the game Tracy is Tracy Ham, Tracy Ham. Game. Yeah, Tracy Ham. Right. So yeah. I think there's a, a much bigger adjustment for, you know, running style quarterbacks that come from running style offense than it is uh, uh, passing because, you know, I can always throw the ball all over the field. And so it wasn't not a throw that I couldn't make. Um, so for me is the 12th, the 12th man was an adjustment because now I have to understand, like, how do – how do you play defense with an extra guy and what you can do and what you can't do compared to 11 uh, guys on the field and 12 guys on the field? I mean, there's, it's a little bit different what, uh, what you can see uh, on the defensive side of the ball. I'm going to assume though, not one of you stayed up late at night going when you were a child thinking some night, someday, someday in my existence, I am going to play in the Canadian football league. It wasn't, it yeah, wasn't, let, right? no. uh, what was that experience for you, Mo? Coming all of a sudden, Man. your second round draft pick, right? Of Seattle, uh, sorry, of New Orleans after playing at UW. And here you are now in Canada. You know, it was, uh, it was a humbling experience for me. Uh, for me, I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm second round draft choice, one of the uh, best in the country all the time. And, and, uh, coming to uh, New Orleans was a, a dream come true, uh, having a great career, uh, a couple of injuries uh, yeah. here and there, and uh, a tremendous knee injury that uh, uh, really uh, was a setback. Uh, going to Canada, I actually was using Canada as a uh, as rehab, as a rehab to make sure that uh, uh, my limbs were in place and, and what have you. Uh, found out, man, I said, look, you know, the, the it was an eye-opening experience as well because I found out there were guys who could play. Um, yeah. They just happened to be in Canada. You <laughs> right. know, it was a, a, a break here and there. And uh, and not just saying this, uh, Damon, just because you're on the phone, man, and I, I, I like you as an individual, but, you know, I, I, I watched you. I'm, I'm People don't know I'm really a student of the game, too. And when I saw you throw me an out route looking to the other sideline, and throw it. Uh, I do that in practice. I taught my quarterback how to do it as I was coaching. And I said, man, you can look over here and you can actually throw it to this guy over right. here. Because my guy, Damon, Damon Allen, you should do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's right. He was doing right. you, you. You were Damon. You were doing Pat Mahone shit before Pat Mahone yeah, shit was yeah. born. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but Craig, but Craig, you weren't your pro. You were you weren't your prototypical receiver in, in terms of the NFL. But you fit perfectly with the CFL game from the get go. Well, Craig was a running back, man. That's true. Yeah, I forgot about that. You I mean, were running back. I, I was running back all my life, Cam. But I I wasn't supposed to make it. Like I said, I was blessed. Yeah. For a guy to go to San Diego State and get kicked off the team his junior year and then to come back and then kicked off the team his senior year, yeah. I should have never got a shot. I remember signing with San Francisco for $600. Wow. And I went back to Redwood City. I'll show you a letter from Bill Walsh personally yeah. sent me. I never read it until about a year ago. If I would have had that mentorship like my boy Dog had and his family or Mo had and, you know, or your dad, yeah, things would have been a little different for me. I was a guy, like I said, from South Central. You couldn't tell me nothing, Ken. Anybody on my team knew me. Yeah. You know, I did my own thing. I did it my way. And I man, wasn't that dude was a surfer, man. He was a surfer in San Diego, bro. 
This guy was a surfer. <laughs> so he, he was he was he was I, I David Benefield before Benefield. Yeah, but when hey. I made it when I when I was made it into the league, that's when I start getting the mentorship. Yeah. And the first gentleman that hurt me uh, that helped me in my game because I was a running back all my life. Yeah. But when San Francisco signed me, they signed me as a receiver. And there was a guy there named Fred Solomon. Freddie Solomon, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Fast Fred. This guy, oh, 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 man. And I remember one time he took me out with uh, another gentleman. Uh, and rookie, I was a rookie. He mentored me. And I came back to the dorms. And I told all the boys, I was like, man. Freddie Solomon smoked cigarettes. I can't believe that because he was so fast. You know, me, 20 years old, I couldn't believe it. And the word got out that I told the guys that he smoked cigarettes. And probably he was mad at me. He <laughs> was really mad at me. And I knew right then, you don't talk about your other teammates. So those guys that helped me along the game when I came into the league, especially Edmonton. When I got to Edmonton, Warren Moon was there. And I, and I know Warren from my neighborhood, so I felt safe. And what I tried to do was emulate what he was doing as on the field and off the field. And at that time, Warren had a cookie company called Warren yeah. Moon Cookies. Yeah, I remember. And he had a wife, he had kids. So immediately I thought, if I continue this single life, I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah. So I, you know, I looked how he was for me and... I really think when I got to Edmonton, Larry Highball, Joe Holloman, and Ed Jones, those guys took me underneath their wing, slapped me across the head a couple of times, said, you don't do that. You don't do that. So that's when I started getting the mentorship that you guys probably got when you guys were young. When I was mm-hmm. young, man, I, who, who, Ken, I was wild, brother. But Craig, I, I, I think somewhere along the way, you realize that because you're seeing it around you, that a lot of your the guys you rolled with one day be gone. And so you figure I better, I better live now because I don't have a guarantee of tomorrow. And that's got, that's gotta be a very stressful place to be emotionally, psychologically through it all. And, and, and let me say something uh, in here uh, along those lines. Go ahead, Mo. Uh, um, I, I believe Dan yeah. may uh, be, be on the same page uh, with me. Yeah, the uh, the Craig Ellis's are the, the young you man that. that. Go ahead, Mo. Go ahead, Mo. Uh, the Craig Ellis's, I believe, are the young men mm-hmm. that we're seeking out. Those with those uh, opportunities, those with those talents, yeah. uh, that are being driven in the in the in the wrong direction, yeah. with mm-hmm. the guidance that could be shared, and you put them on the right path. And you can you can get greatness out of it. Um, yeah. These are the guys that that you look back upon, and you made some of the the greatest impact. You know, you look at a uh, Damon Allen, brother Marcus Allen, who's Super Bowl champion and MVP, and doing amazing things. Uh, that guy is he's looking and he's seeing his brother. He's touching his brother. You know, yeah. I have my dad. You're right. Uh, I'm, I'm there. I'm seeing it. That that's what we aspire to be. Mm-hmm. And those kids who don't see that, you know, they don't see the um, the education piece. They don't see you have to go to college. Yeah. Um, it it it's just uh, you know, something that 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 we strive uh, uh, strive to do and strive to reach. And the better I am, the better they are. The better they are, the better I am. If that yeah, makes absolutely. sense, because yeah. you know, it it's it's a it's a it's a blessing to be able to do that. Uh, it really I, is, I, uh, I, I especially watch. along those lines, just to piggyback on both of them. You know, I mean, we're, it's, a, it's a blessing, and we're fortunate to be able to have our fathers in our lives throughout our, our whole lives. Yeah. Where it, it wasn't, you know, yeah, I watched my brother, but it all started from my father. I Amen. Mean, he, he taught right. us how to be competitive. Nope. He yeah. taught us about hard work. Uh, you know, it's all those little uh, small things that you need. And like I said, my father was very disciplined, too. So <laughs> you, we, we've all been there before. I had, plenty, I had plenty of spankings back then because my father always felt that, hey, 
um, sport, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, spare spoil, the rod, spoil the child. Spare, man. Yeah, spare the rod, spoil the child. <laughs> yeah. uh, a mindset, and he he honestly believed in in that aspect. And so, for us, you know, it's a blessing to be able to have our our parents um, involved in our guidance, yeah. along with you know <laughs> the other parents. That it was like my father said, "Hey, you get the okay to spank his that's butt right. if he's doing something wrong." And so yeah, that's right. That whole. Uh, district uh, community is involved yeah. in the raising of a child. Um, I mean, that's what I experienced. That's why I always felt like I was loved my whole life. So, not not, not man, uh, uh, monetary, like far as wealth and all this stuff. I just felt I was I had a wealth of love growing up my whole life. And so that allowed me to prosper and always think of good things of what I'm capable of doing. So let's get into the, then we're athletes and we're driven by ego. If you're, if you're an elite athlete and you haven't got an ego, then you're in the wrong business because Man, the, the other egos are going to, the other egos are going to kick your butt real quick. <laughs> you are speaking volumes. Right. And uh, I was speaking to a, a colleague of mine and say, what is the difference um, in the great, in the great athletes? You yeah. know, everybody can run four, three, four, four. Mm -hmm. Everybody can catch, you know, everybody can, yeah. well, everybody couldn't run that corner out like I ran it though. <laughs> <laughs> Craig's going to say, well, I, I can run a pretty good corner. <laughs> yeah, you ran a good corner. Too. Yeah, you ran a good corner, but it's the <laughs> mindset, you know, the mindset. What, 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 what's going on in your mind that makes you better than that individual that's, that's across from Yeah. Um, I firmly believed, and it's not it's not arrogance, it's not cockiness, it's it's confidence. Yeah. Because if you don't have a confidence, I knew that, you know, I remember Damon one time, man, you, I don't know if you remember or not, but you, um, I ran an out route. It may have been against Ottawa on the sideline, and you fired one in there on the sideline, man, and it was tight, too. And uh, anything you threw my way, I was, hey, that was, that was my ball. Yeah. And I and I squeezed it and, and you said something about the the the, the hands and, and uh you know knowing that you know I knew Hill was gonna bring that down. Uh it's that type of confidence within yourself because a lot of people have great talent and I, yeah. we've all been around it, but don't believe that they have that talent. Right. But the it's difference the is, though, Mo, I think the difference is, and Craig, you, you, you guys interject when I, is that when you're in college, you can get away with running a route maybe a little I shorter. Think. You can get away with running a route maybe a little deeper yeah. because there's only three other guys on the field who can compete in college, right? They have a bunch That's of right. guys, but there's three guys. Now you get to the pro level. Now everybody can play. And, and what people don't understand about Damon, because they, they all get caught on his, his, his athletic ability. And, and red eight, blue nine. Craig, I'm not sure you, you probably ran the same thing. I meant to red eight, blue nine, full sprint. He sprint full left side, a deep comeback, and he throw and I and we can hear him laughing when he's yeah. throwing it, and it lands yeah. in your hand yeah. like he handed totally. it to you. So he totally. every season as a great athlete, but what they don't see is that the expectation to be here, not there, on this hash mark, not on the numbers, all that discipline. Because if you leave a quarterback guessing. You're not going to be in the huddle. You're not going to see the ball. Right. That's right. right. Competency is awfully important because you can be skillful, but all of a sudden everybody's skillful. Now you have to be competent, and now you have to be competent under pressure. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're speaking very well, Ken. You're speaking very well. And those are some of the things that, you know, it's – and people ask me about the game. I say that's a foreign language. You know, uh, you have to be mentally capable. One – if you're going to go to eight teams like Damon, you know, you're going to have to learn eight different languages. You know, there's uh, every team has a different language. Right. And that's something that you have to pick up. You know, it's not a universal uh, uh, a language where they say, OK, go out here and run an out route. Everybody don't go say out route. Somebody may say it in Spanish. Somebody right. may say it in French. You know, right. say it's Japanese. So <laughs> you have to be able to adapt. So your mental capacity has to be just as, as, as talented as your physical capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why we always talk. We use the the the, uh, the acronym FBI, football intelligence, right? I've always 
enjoy and love playing with guys with football intelligence because I can have that conversation with them and then we can go out there and implement it, right? And yeah. because we can we can adjust. I mean, right. we played in Ottawa one time, me and Steptoe, and I played with Steptoe uh, in Edmonton. Jones. Yeah. Yes. But we knew uh, we knew how good Les Brown was, right? We knew he had the ability to read uh, based on play, and so it was a comeback. So we ran a full uh, sprint out at eight twenty-one back to eighteen comeback. But we knew Les when he reads that full, he jumps outside. So we came back to the huddle one time. I said, "Step to, hey, not many people could do this, but I want you to run a post." Because the safety is flattened off at a certain distance, too. Yeah. He's flattening off about 18 yards and going sideways. And I said, Step, I'm going to run a, a eight, and I want you to run a post. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the funny thing is the, the safety got caught. Uh, uh, Les Brown jumped outside, and, and Stephon ran a post right down the middle of the field, man, and, and they both look at each other. I said, yeah. See, that's the kind of uh, adjustments – understanding and then you can you know have that communication with your receiver and then make right. that make those things work right because i'm always i'm a forward thinker i'm not gonna allow you to just do whatever you want to do on the football field yeah especially when i believe i can make that throw if i roll to the right throw a post let me connect that to competency then you have to put all the work in practice mm -hmm. and then in the game it, it almost goes back to when we were a kid we say okay if he's at the car then go to the sign. If he's at the sign, go to the car. And you right. sit at the bench and do that because many times you've been on a bench and we've all been there. We say, hey, I think I can beat him on this route. No, no, no. Let's just run the play. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. That's not just, <laughs> but no. But, you know what I mean, but Craig? If, go ahead. But if you if you plan with a guy like Damon, all the quarterback needs to know is the formation to get his linemen involved, making yeah. sure they have their protection, right? Right. And then you can run any uh, variations off that right. Like Damon said, that's a hard throw, spread right, throwing a post. See, yeah. that's FBI for me. When I see a quarterback, and that's how I used to uh, view you, dog, because when you came in the league, I was in Toronto. Yeah, and right. you were with Edmonton. You guys had, you had Tracy, Damon, and um, uh, Matt. And we played a game in, in Edmonton because my mom was at that game, dog. I remember that. It was a shootout again. And I think we won that one at the end of the game. Me, Chris Woods, and uh, uh, Daryl K. Smith, and uh, right. Conrad Holloway. You remember that one, dog? Yeah. DK doesn't That's, get the, yeah. DK doesn't <laughs> no, get remember, the respect no. he's due. I remember <laughs> when we, tr we traded Chris Woods to <laughs> Toronto, and he killed us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. but DK, right, let, I, me, let me get back let me get back to a call I'm sorry about the phone call guys like no, I said I ahead. have my foundation that I'm doing a lot of work while we're in this unsettling time I think Mo mentioned a lot of things where, where playing Pop Warner playing high school playing college prepared us for the professional life where we were able to adapt and do mm. these things that you guys talk about but before I was get up before I was interrupted where I came from in South Central, having a probation officer, she was my guiding light. Yeah. Because there was a time when I was 13, when I was incarcerated, I didn't think I was going to get out. Mm -hmm. And hey man, when I did book. get out, <laughs> pardon? You need to write a book. Hey, you need to write a book. Oh, no. That's I tell right. my story. Now that, hey, dog, dog. Hmm. I told my stories to my girls two years ago and I said, look, I'm, I don't have a problem. I, you know, I don't have a problem telling where I came from because mm -hmm. what I've done from where I came from, I'm blessed because I don't think that not a lot of people can go from being in the California Youth Authority to start in varsity on high school, coming right out of jail, right? Right. <laughs> but that's just because I didn't want to go back. <laughs> All right. Now, Craig, hey, hey, look at, hey, hey, Craig, hey, I had quick. a couple of partners. I had a couple partners that would have been on your team. <laughs> hey, 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 trying to play football, trying to play football in the jailhouse with those with those slippery shoes, bro. Everybody was equal there. I couldn't I couldn't display my talent because I didn't have a cleats. I always wanted to take a pair of cleats. Crap. I always wanted Crap. to take a pair of cleats when I got busted. 
I always yeah. want to take a pair of cleats. If I got busted, I have a pair of cleats. And, they, and, and they take they take the they take the laces out. So you got these they got these TFOs. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, guys. And the last thing you said when you got out the can though was always it make was sure you know. Oh, no, the last I, thing you probably what? told those guys, Craig, was always make sure you know where the free safety is. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what, though? Well, when I did get to Canada, and when you guys talk about the mentorship, what what allowed me to play at the level that I played at and to compete at the level I played yeah. at, it wasn't arrogance. I was very, very competitive. I I will I will piss farther than you, spit farther you, or shoot far. We used to race in the street. I always want to be the anything I want to do. I want to be the best. Yeah, right. And that's just the heart. That's the heart. And being able to be coached by Bill Walsh and to look at him and Joe Montana and Dwight Clark and Freddie Solomon prepare each week and watch how they practice, watch how they did things in, in two-minute offense when they got to the red zone. Back then, it was check with me. It was just that it was – I've never seen anything like that at any college or high school level I ever played at. Wow. And yeah. then that's when, when I came to Edmonton, it wasn't new because I've saw it before with the mm -hmm. Brian Kellys, Waldell Smith, Warren Moon, Brian Scott, you know, Tommy Scott, Tommy Scott, Brian, you know, Fryer. Uh, Brian Fryer, you know, watching these Marco guys Sinkar. run routes, watching these guys prepare. They want, there's no, there's no reason why they didn't, why they won five championships in a row because their work ethic. And that's yeah. what I was taught at San Francisco when I came out of San Diego. Well, hey, hey, hey I, I, I'll, ahead, I'll say Mo. something real quick, Ken. And uh, uh, he mentioned Warren Moon. You know, Warren Moon's a UW product. UW guy, yeah. We, we work out in the off season, what have you. And Damon, I'm sorry, man, but his ball was so pretty, man. It uh, yeah, hey, man, I, oh, hey, 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 that thing, that doesn't look like <laughs> my pretty ball. <laughs> <laughs> you do a tight ball, dog, dog. You do a tight ball. Your ball was tight. <laughs> No, yeah. no, no, but no, no. You I, guys are, I, you guys know, know what? Know this is crazy. Hold on. I you guys, you guys are football. spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I had to catch football from Kenny Hobart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know who hey. do a nice oh. ball? Oh, dog, dog. Oh. You know who do a nice ball was the uh, um, quarterback, from, uh, Jim Plunkett. He threw a nice ball. Ask your brother. He threw a nice <laughs> ball. Man. I mean, he threw a Joe Montana ball. He he can take stuff off of it and put it between the safety and Hold the on, yeah. line. Man, he threw I, a, I, used to, I used to watch Plunkett from my living room, man. I was, yeah, I was, was going to say, man. Craig, how old are you? Old, I wasn't old enough to play yet. Man. Hey, Craig, how old are you, 76? <laughs> are you 77? <laughs> oh, my. Okay, well, listen, Mo Hill, love you. Thank you. Learned so much from you, thank you. back in the day. Craig Ellis, thank you. Uh, we're gonna get a bunch of the guys, and know what we gotta do? We just gotta drop names and tell stories. Man, that's hey, good. Man. That's all we gotta do. Hey, Ken, man, I, I wanna, I wanna, dog. Go ahead, Mo. I don't, I don't know if man, I told you, man, but you, uh, you know, when you talk about the transition, I think I was actually, I know I was a better receiver and an in, uh, better NFL receiver than a Canadian receiver because of some of the other, other uh, transitions. And, uh, man, you uh, – I used to watch you. I watched you uh, close being a student of the game, man. One of the toughest cats, man, that I've seen play the game uh, and, and play with such passion, man. And and uh, that was uh, appreciated as an athlete. You know, I was a hell of an athlete. You you, you know, and you're um, – you helped me change my mindset of the Canadian game and with guys yeah. like Damon and uh, – Earl and, and 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 the guys that that we played with, yeah, man. Earl the Pearl, Earl the oh, Pearl, man. God, on, I mean, man. I said, and when they tell me, man, then eventually, but after my second year, they say, you know, what's the difference? I say, hell, they don't pay enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I was getting, and I was getting paid too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, David, I said, man, I used to walk around with that much in my pocket. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, listen, Craig Ellis, thank you so much. Nothing but no, love. I want to connect with you again real soon. And uh, All right, no problem. And and really appreciate that. Mo Hill, 
You know how much love I got for you and Scotty Walker and Earl Winfield and all those guys. Too much fun. I think I think what happened for you, Mo, and maybe it was the same thing for Craig, is when you got into Canada, all the other stuff you had to worry about, the pressure was pushed uh -huh. aside. And all you had to do was just go play and have fun. And just have fun, man. And just have fun. Yeah. And, yeah. and, hey, Damon, you made yeah. it fun too, man. You know, one thing uh, that, that people don't understand is, is, is good people go far with good talent. Yeah, you right. know you could, yeah, and and uh, I really like the 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 presence of of yourself, Damon. The if when you teach that man the the locker room presence, you know, a good guy, man, who, who gets along, man. And you go on out there, Ken. You touched upon it, and you go out and have fun, man. Yeah, yeah. You go out and have fun. Throw away all that other mess, man. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what me that's, that's how I was, man. I challenged everybody on our team. Hey, 40, 20, it didn't matter, bro. Let's go. But <laughs> dog, right. dog, dog right. you are you are a leader though. Dog, you've always been a leader. That's why you play quarterback, brother. No, you've yeah. been a leader all your life, brother. You always been a leader. Yeah. That's why absolutely. you absolutely that's man. that and, and and that's what you bring to the table. But what I don't understand with and I you know me, dog. I know you personally. I've been knowing you too many years, but you know that. I don't understand why you don't have the opportunity as others because with the mindset that you have ah. and the leaderships, the leadership that you capable and what you give, I don't understand it. I just don't understand <laughs> it, my brother. Would you she not understand doing, that he that he is not coaching? Somewhere. <laughs> right. Somewhere. That's, that's, I don't understand. Hey, say, it, say what you really mean, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Mo, they can't touch me now. They can't that's touch me now. I just say what I feel. Craig Ellis. Say how you, that's right. Say how you really feel, man. September 1st. Why the hell well, ain't you I don't you understand coaching? it. You know what, though? After I got out, like I said, guys, after I got out of the game, I never wanted to play the game again because it devolved my life. I, I, I lived and died to play football, right? They didn't have to pay me. I would have played for free, right? And don't tell him that, that I could, don't tell him that, uh, Craig. No, please I don't. I don't tell him that. I, you know, I would have back then. We didn't make no money back there anyway. Back then, we didn't make no money. We made over a hundred. That was, that was like cake. That was but, good. But the right? union, the union gave us that that fanny pack, that Mo Hill. We wore that thing everywhere. Hey man, hey, that was the hey, that was the most expensive item I had. Seven hundred dollar fanny pack, baby. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's great, the, the, the gold, the gold fanny pack. But, I had yeah, that but what fanny I don't pack, understand, man. though, after we, after we get out of the game and we, we want to leave the game, but some of us choose to be a part of the game. Yeah, Damon right. had never left the game. He's been a part of the game since he, since he retired. That's why I don't understand why he hasn't got an opportunity at that level because his mindset and his capability puts him at that level. I, I'm not, right now, and the coaches in the league right now, I, I put him inside there, and I bet he'll do a lot better putting a team together, organizing players, and putting everybody into one. Yeah. That's what leadership capabilities are. Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, Craig you Ellis. Know, you, <laughs> Nothing around, but man, love. Man, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll join in with you, man, to get a – you know, to get the get the fella on, on somebody's <laughs> sideline, man. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Mo Hill, love you lots. You know that. Craig Ellis, a pleasure. First time I ever had a chance to chat with you, watched you play, learned from you, and uh, I apologize for hitting you about eight yards out of bounds back in the day. That's all right, though. You're all right. Hey, you know, hey, I look hey, Ken. He was probably, he was probably talking like, a lot of mess then, too. Yeah, yeah. But Ken, make sure, make sure you go ahead and go on my website, uh, alumniinaction.net. Okay. I'm going to be doing some stuff. We got it. We got you, Craig. Thank you, brother. All right, bro. Take okay. care, guys. There you go. All righty. Okay, now, Mo Hill, love you. Yes, sir. Love you, man. Uh, love you guys, man. It was great. Yeah, we'll talk soon. We'll talk soon, Mo. Holla at me, D. Holla at All right. me. You I know got we do. Around, like. Yeah. You, <laughs> you dub? You dub in the house? You dub in the house? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> All right, Mo. <laughs> be safe and stay well. All right. Be good, man. Okay. That's Mo Hill and that's Craig Ellis. All right, David. You and me now. Why aren't you coaching the CFL? Well, I think a, a lot, too, is uh, when you're dealing with – I mean, there's politics and everything that we do as well. Um I think probably some of the issue uh, has been as well as, you know, people, when I talk to people or I announced this year, I wanted to coach, Yeah. you know, 
you know, people like, oh, well, we didn't know you wanted to coach, but the fact that I announced, it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's, you know, excuses or, well, you've been away from the game 10 years. I mean, the game hasn't changed that much. <laughs> so, I mean, since I, I retired from the game. And so it's just a matter of, uh, I guess, in a are lot of ways. Are you insulted? Having the right opportunity, being with the right team, being in the right situation, and being in the right position as well. And so, but the, the funny thing is, as we, we add to this in this com this conversation, you know, this year I was going to guest coach this year with the Argos before this this yeah. uh, this quarantine and this pan uh, pandemic uh, came about. So, you know, I was going to go to uh, become a, a guest coach with the Argos and, yeah. and see and see where it goes from there because I I felt even with them asking me to come in to be a guest coach. You know, I was actually go also going through my <laughs> uh, interview as well to see yeah. if within those two weeks, how do I operate with the, the team and yeah. with the players and all those things. And so, and, you know, you, if I have to continue to prove myself that I'm capable of doing those things, I don't mind doing that as well. Isn't it insulting though for say, you know, you've been on the game for 10 years. Let's see, you've only played how many years? How many cups did you win? How many times did you MVP? All this stuff, your resume, like, I have a feeling he can figure shit out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Absolutely. And sometimes right. it's being uh, thinking outside the box, but you have to understand too, right? The coaching and the head coachings are guys are getting younger. Yeah. Um, they're getting younger. So, and I did, I also realized too, it's about rapport, right? Uh, yeah. The people that you know, I mean, they hire people that they know um, and played with. Mm. And so, it's no different. Like, you know, when you look at the, the new coach here, I mean, he hired most of his staff as the guys he probably coached with or he played with when he was in Winnipeg. Like, yeah. you know, the running back coaches played in Woody, replay with them in Winnipeg. Yeah. Uh, the receiver coach uh, is uh, from the peg, which played with them when he was in Winnipeg. And so, mm. yeah, I mean, it's about relationship as well. But at the end of the day, I mean, if I'm head coach, I'm getting the best available minds possible right i mean it's just how you look at coaching that because i'm not fearful of you know this guy may know more than i do and all those things no i yeah. want the best coaches available and the best coaches around me so ultimately yes i'm the manager yeah but ultimately i i, I rely on their expertise their experiences to make the ultimate decisions was based was best for the organization as well right so yeah. Some of the greatest coaches in our game <laughs> play with other great coaches. Yeah. You came to the CFL in 1985. You're a mm -hmm. Cal State Fullerton kid. You played for the Titans. You broke a bunch of records. You were 16th in the Heisman. Everybody goes on about Marcus winning the Heisman. You don't right. get enough props for the fact that you were actually in the Heisman race as well, and you picked up uh, votes there. But um, you're with Edmonton. You're successful, right? You're young, and, and the glass looks half full. Mm-hmm. But then you come to Ottawa, and uh, we already knew you were a great athlete, but I guess the greatest challenge for you, and this might segue to leadership and coaching, was right. your ability to lead your own team. Because in Edmonton, you had Tracy Ham, you had Matt Dunnigan there. Right. But all of a sudden, this was your team. And how difficult was that transition for you uh, as a Rough Rider and even as a Tiger Cat? Because those were, if you look at that chapter, perhaps the most unsuccessful segment of your career, even though you put up some great numbers. Right. How did you, how did you navigate that water and how tough was that for you? And how did you come out of that becoming the better leader? Cause you're well, already you know, a great athlete. It's, you know, I, when, when people ask me about the Ottawa situation yeah, and I always say that Ottawa was very important in my career, Do, no, understanding that, you know, I came in with a tremendous hype. Lots. We just came off the Grey Cup. I was the MVP of the Grey Cup. And then all of a sudden now, I mean, I, you know, I ended up signing uh, one more year in Edmonton, but I ended up signing with Ottawa from just a, a, a year and a half ago. I was, yeah. you know, winning the Grey Cup and being the MVP. And so I came there with great hype and great expectation. And, and also what made it even easier is the fact that, you know, the coach that took over, was also my offensive coordinator. So I understood the offense I was coming to bring. And so to me, um, the, the biggest challenge was, this is my first team that I'm actually starting. 
I am the guy, right? The guy, the, now the, the guy's about to join us. He's being fine for being late for the meeting. That's okay. David yes, Williams. Who? Super Dave? <laughs> Super Dave Williams, baby. Just joined us. <laughs> Out of the University of Illinois. <laughs> Hey, Super Dave, boy, you see you got all these great receivers and pass catchers and all this stuff. We, uh, you, you just missed Craig Ellis on there. Man. <laughs> Craig, 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 turned, Craig, Craig, Craig Ellis is crazy. Craig turned the 30-minute show into a full-fledged movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, Montel okay, Hill. If we had no Hill, Montel Hill was on. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, you know, getting back to the the question of, you know, what, what Ottawa, Ottawa toughened me up. Yeah. You know, not only on the leadership style point and, you know, being the, the starter, because I, mean, I, I started my third year in the league, yeah. but I played a lot in my first and second year in the league as well because of done against concussions and, you know, getting an opportunity. You know, I was with the coach, Jackie Parker, that says, you know, we're going to play you like yeah. every game. Yeah. Right. So he was always like, hey, we're going to prepare you every single game. But when I went to Ottawa, um, the expectations were high. I mean, I took a picture with uh, uh, Brian Maroney in the in the office. I gave him the jersey like I was meeting president and stuff. And, you know, saying that I was going to be the savior. And so, but I think the biggest difference was um, I was coming to a, an organization that didn't know how to win. Yeah. And I came from an organization that too we we believed in not winning, not losing two games in a row. Yeah. So it was totally different in the mindset coming from one organization to another. And, and that's the point I, I, you know, that's why I was able to perform individually and do great things. But for me is, yeah, you, you, you spoke early about ego. I always wanted to have team ego because <laughs> I know if I, we have team ego, we can win a championship. I think, I think it, within a team culture, a healthy team culture, there's a respect for the code. There's a code of behavior and expectation, how we treat one right. another. And uh, we didn't necessarily have that in Ottawa, and it took some time for, make, for us to get that. Right. But we needed players who had been there, walked that path. David That's Williams, right. you walked that path. You'd been there. You had success collegiately. You had success as a pro. And then you come to Ottawa. And what was the first thing you saw? You know, I – I, we were better in Ottawa than I think. I think uh, they thought we could be. They brought in a, a, a different mix of guys, yeah, right. but they didn't. They didn't know how to. They didn't know how to coach us. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. All the pieces was there, and I think they did a good job of getting the right people. Yeah. But then they didn't know what to do with the people they had. Right. right. Because. We we were just a game or two away from being a great cup style uh, caliber team. Absolutely, right? yeah. I had this conversation with Damon a, about a week ago. About a week ago, uh, Winnipeg won the great cup. Yeah, Winnipeg couldn't beat Ottawa. Right, <laughs> but we couldn't beat Toronto. Yeah. Right, absolutely. So that that was the dynamic. So that one come that comes in when coaching. Okay, we got to tailor our game. Mm -hmm. to beat these guys yeah, because we had the weapons and we even had the defense mm -hmm. and Ken, you and Wilcox were, were young, really young, but yeah. Damon had, had, had skills and the knowledge and me and Stefan on the outside, we were killing people. Right. Stefan was leading the league in yards. I was leading the league in touchdowns so we could put up the points. You know, I so, think one, you know, it's funny that one, one year, like Ken, think about this. Like we averaged thirty five points a game, yeah. In one season, dude, and and dude, we probably lost them the majority of our games. Yeah. But I'm saying, that, think about this and put in our offense in today's game. We averaged thirty five a game, like thirty five a game in today's game. You you probably win a majority of your games. But with that said, I don't think that's an indictment of the defense. I think no. what happened was, as a group, we weren't in a headspace to be prepared for those five plays that would determine if we'd win right. the game or not. So we right. put up some numbers and we'd be dangerous, but we'd also be our own worst enemy in a lot of ways. Right. So we couldn't be Toronto. Well, you look at the talent and say, what, what, it could be physical, right? It could be. So what was it about those teams? It was and, mental. And it goes it mental, mental as a whole. And yeah, what'd you, what, what you believe you achieve? I'll tell yeah. you what it was. Go ahead, and, this, and I believe this. We had pockets of guys like like Damon and them in Edmonton 
they believed that they were going to win. They, yeah. they weren't going to the Great Cup. It was a, it was a failure in yeah, Ottawa. Right. We had pockets of groups of guys. Remember at towards the end of the, the end of the year, probably three quarters in, yeah. we had a meeting. They was talking about people was drugged. Somebody they yeah. said I was a drug dealer in the meet. Like yeah, a right. drug dealer. I don't even I don't even freaking drink. Right? Yeah, right. They were saying I was a drug dealer because remember I had a pager? Right. <laughs> they was like Hop and Williams are drug dealers. Like, wait, and and, and and Tony Cherry. Right, like drug, like drug. A, and, yep. And Tony didn't drink. Tony didn't drink or smoke either. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was like things like that. Just the yeah. chemistry, just the chemistry, and where you can have a meeting like that. Yeah. But yet you got to go out and 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 beat some big time teams to go to a championship. That was the difference. Yeah. And being a championship caliber team, and just being a a good team that yeah. you know can put up some stats. And then you also have to understand, too, is uh, like, you know, Goldman, you know, came from offensive coordinator to become the head coach. So we don't understand That's his experience guy. as being a young head coach. Right. It, don't, it's, this is like his first year head coaching. Yeah. Well, well, let me let me. And let so, me, let me. And so I, I think a lot of times you take on the toughness of your coach, too. And so with that, with that being said. The times when you really need your 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 stamp on your coaches to be able to hey, this is what we need mm-hmm. to do during this, right? We take on the um, what the is personality. that? Personality. You take on the, the personality. personality of your coach yeah. too, right? Yeah. And so I think right. in a sense, th- those things are just all new to us, and we're just trying to figure out how to win. Because like I said when I got there, what what was your record before I got there? It wasn't good. It wasn't good. <laughs> it right? wasn't good. Well, we went to the playoffs. Yeah. No, we went to the playoffs. Yeah. Right. We, and we were good. We were one game away. But look, Damon, that, that hits the nail on the head. When you say Goldman, uh, Ken said, hey, I'm going to, this is who's going to be on the show. And then I'm going to have Goldman on the show. I told Ken, you can't put me on the show with Goldman. You cannot put me on the show with Goldman. Yeah. That dude to me was an idiot. That dude had the team. But when you got to take on the personality of your coach, right. It wasn't happening because I, I get it that you knew. I get it, this is your first gig, but I would go in for treatment and he'd come in. I'm leading the league in touchdowns and he'd come in and give me a hard time about something stupid. Like, yeah. wait, how you pitting me against the other receiver You're and right. we're on the same damn offense? <laughs> right. So I think, I think though, if you have a choice though, would you rather be a coordinator or a head coach? I know you get paid more as a head coach, but ultimately, because Steve was a coordinator, an X and O's guy, and he wasn't a person. He wasn't a person to person type person, right? He couldn't connect on that level, and and I think that was part of the challenge for him. And I think I, because I think so he wasn't too. strong in that category, I think some of the players who were bigger personalities, right, overran the team, right, and, like and got us and got us into it. trouble. Yeah, right. Right. No, no you know, absolutely. Like I said, at the end of the day, like if if like uh, if it was a Matthews uh, coaching our football team, I mean, mm-hmm. we, obviously we would have been a, di- a different football team, right? We'd have won the cha- we'd have won a championship because we knew who was in charge. Yeah, right. You knew who's in charge. Right. Who was in charge? And yeah. so I think a lot of times too, we took on the personality of Goldman when you needed to show some toughness in certain areas uh, of your football team. Okay. We didn't things. have that, but I mean, there's no slot on him uh, being a coordinator and know how to play the game of football because the, the dude was successful offensively, right? Yeah. So, right, right. He I mean, that's how piece. I learned the game. They put the pieces together, mm-hmm. and he wasn't strong in that that leadership because he had yeah. never been in it before. Right. But he had the pieces, and then he just had to tweak his little personality here and there, yeah. and get the hell out of the way. Yeah, because, <laughs> right. but see, like, prime example, we we in our third series in a game, yeah, right. Ken Hobart's warming up on the sideline, and the, and the fans are starting to Hobart. Oh yeah, here we are. Steve yeah. Goldman, right. you supposed to, Steve Goldman, you supposed to walk over to the dude and say, "Sit your ass down." <laughs> right. We in a battle now. You got the fans cheering against your quarterback. That defeats the purpose of the damn game. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. And that's why I was telling Ken, I said, what, the, the reason why Ottawa toughed me out, and I, and I always use Ottawa as the, this is the one that you guys toughed me up. 
to the further my career. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that helped me, right? Because what I went through in Ottawa, like I wouldn't do that to no other quarterback in the league. I never done that to Dunnigan. Yeah. I always waited till uh, Jackie Parker says, hey, Damon, go warm up. What What if you would have done that on the sidelines, Dunnigan Saya? What would happen then? I'm pretty we, sure I, I, I'm pretty sure Matt would have said something. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody would have said, a lot of people would have said something. So yeah, then, that's silly. That takes away from the team. Right. Yeah. Right. And Ken, and Ken, I don't know if you remember, but I remember, you know, I used to own Les Brown. Yeah. I own right. Les Brown. Right. But I knew one thing I couldn't beat Les Brown on was a damn corner route. Right. <laughs> and Steve Goldman put in a game plan with corner. a million corner routes against Les Brown. And I said, Coach, I could beat Les Brown on anything on any given play on yeah, any given right. play. I remember the conversation. But a, but a corner route, I'm not getting open. So don't even throw me the damn ball. Probably yeah. the toughest route for a wide receiver in the CFL to run is a corner route because you're giving up to and if he doesn't bite, if he doesn't jump the post them. But Les Brown always stayed outside looking outside at the quarterback. In. Yep. And right. by the quarterback so, always. Right? Yep. Right? So you can you run hooks, the post, you you run hooks the post, ends, all that other stuff, right, based on his leverage and positioning, yeah. he should have been running ends, hooks, and all those things against Les. Well, That's why, think. you know, yeah. we roll out against Les, like, okay, he's jumping outside. The guy's not, yeah. the guy's not dumb. So you you bring me in, you got Damon in there, yep. you put in your game plan, your 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 all-star receiver tell you, coach, let's not run that route because it's not gonna work. Right. And he tell you, you we're gonna do it. do it anyway. Like <laughs> that def- I mean, what kind of leadership do you have, young man? Right. <laughs> right. And and and, da- and David, as complicated as the game is, when people hear the sports the the quarterback and the vernacular in the huddle. And all the stuff going on. How do you know that stuff? Well, you learn it first off. You go. To your, it's a playbook. It's like a school book. You learn it, but you learn it so that you get to a point where mentally, and psychologically, you're so prepared that you can go to the bench. And now it goes back to when we played the game as a child. And we did. Right. I used this example earlier, Damon. Hey, listen. If he's by the car when you're playing football on the street, if he's by the car, you go the go the sign. If you hit the sign, go the car. Absolutely. Right. Hey, Ken. Ken, how yeah. about this, Ken? We play in Ottawa. Yeah. Damon comes in and calls a play. And I said, Damon, I'm running a post. And he said, no, <laughs> Dave, run a corner. I said, Damon. I'm running a post. Can I curse? Go yeah. ahead. I said, Damon, throw the fucking put, throw the fucking post. I'm going to score a touchdown. Damon threw the post. I scored a touchdown. We came to the sideline. He took Damon out of the game. <laughs> Yeah. What the? Who does that? Yeah, right. <laughs> Ken, it was about a 60-yard touchdown, and he takes Damon out of the game. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, just, that, just silly stuff like that. Now, the right? good like thing said, is, though, wish, like here's, the, fu- here, here's, here's the funny thing. The, the irony, Damon, is that you guys leave Ottawa, mm-hmm. and you have great second halves of your career. Mm-hmm. I would argue that, David, you left – and maybe you get a greater appreciation for the game. I don't know what happened for you, but your game took off after you left Ottawa. You had some great success. But, Damon, you won three cups. You were a most outstanding player, right? You may have, you probably played your best football after the experience mm-hmm. in Ottawa and Hamilton. Yeah, because like I said the things that I needed to learn as being the leader of a football team yeah. and, and, and to be able to – deal with the amount of criticism I was doing. Like I said, I, I would throw five touchdowns in a ball game and do it, and I would be getting booed in the stadium. I'm like, I don't, it don't make no sense. I'm like, wow, yeah. wow, man, I'm a, I'm an Eastern All-Star, dude. Like, like who throws for, you know, 4,500 yards and rush for 1,000 is, is like <laughs> crazy. And the amount of work I had to do, and that's when I, I realized that uh, – and like I said, I always had it in me, but it yeah. was it, that's the air, that's the team that really tests me to the point where I say, okay, I, you know, I if I can get through Ottawa, I can get through anything, bro. Hey, Let hey, alone hey, driving hey. around the city with the 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 Rough Rider logo on you, bro. <laughs> yeah. You're the most sought after uh, guy in the stadium. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm like, man, hey, I didn't realize like yeah. the logo. Ken, like, now man. Imag- imagine this: Damon threw me 15 touchdowns. Yeah. Stefan Stefan led the league in yards. Yeah. You and Wilcox were rookies. 
right? Yeah. Now imagine, trying to figure things out. Yeah. Now imagine, well, you guys are just learning the game, right? If we stay Damon together, has, Damon has figured out he can throw me 15 touchdowns a game. Yeah. A, a year, right. right? Now that's in a year where we never played together before. Yeah. Right. Now imagine with Wilcox. I threw 36 on, that year. Right. Now yeah. imagine, but imagine now you know all my tendencies. Yeah. Right. Now you know step step toe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ken and Wilcox has grown. Yeah. Right. Now they're seasoned. Now they know how to set up people, beat people, read defenses. Now we do that for four years. Yeah. We are. Well, I believe. I believe. Them. I believe they would assign me in. Uh, what was that in '92? Uh -huh. Yeah. We, we would have won the Great Cup. We yeah. won it in '92. No, but um, Calgary. Calgary won it. Calgary beat them, but I'm saying we would have won. The, we would have been in the Great Cup because Ottawa had the, like the best defense in the league. In and they had Bird, right? And the Gleavermans came in, and they're like, "Well, they didn't want to sign me, so I ended up going to Hamilton." Well, no, I know what happened, right? Eastern, the Eastern final. I was with Hamilton. We were in Hamilton, D. And right. We beat Ottawa. Ozzy hit that field goal in the snow, and Dave Ritchie kept playing cover zero and putting right. draw and less those guys in bad positions trying to blitz in the snow, and Ottawa was winning the game. And then Earl and I scored touchdowns late in the game, and Ozzy hit the field goal. And it was bittersweet because I'm thinking, I'll take the game check in the going to the Eastern final after we won the semifinal. I'll take the game check and go to Winnipeg. But I knew we were going to get our asses handed to us. And I knew we that Ottawa, we played, that we Ottawa played, team, you could have beat Winnipeg. Yeah, but the, no, the thing is, like, we played Winnipeg too many times. That was our fifth time playing Winnipeg that yeah. season. And yeah. that's our while we went to Winnipeg and played that game. Yeah. They figured They figured us out up front. And they just – they bewildered our line. Of it got so bad that Chorus Irvin went to the stands just to tell people to stop throwing snowballs at us. <laughs> wow. wow. Well, in 91, Goldman traded me to Edmonton. Yeah. I didn't right. Leave, I, didn't leave, I didn't leave on my own. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the league in touchdowns. I don't want to go. Yeah. Right? I'm like no. Ottawa. That was kind of cool. And, and Ottawa signed me, and BC didn't sign me. So – I went to where somebody wanted me, so I was happy. Yeah. yeah. Then they traded me to Edmonton. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, no, because it's amazing, too, because uh, the one thing I loved about him, Goldman, when he came there and he signed all them free agents, he was aggressive, right? Yeah. That's how I wanted him to be as a coach. Yeah. That that aggressive. Uh, that yeah. that forthright of saying, hey, we're going to try to – we're going to win this thing. I'm signing guy. We're going to – like to put that in the mindset of our football team instead of like be aggressive in doing signing all the free agents because yeah. the league at that time was mad at every they were mad at us. Well, that's how I end up in Hamilton. Huh. And David, I don't know if you know the story, but earlier in the season because they put guys on waivers and recall them all the time, right? But you can only do it one time during the season. And early in the season, Goldie had put me on waivers, and someone was going to claim me, so they recalled me. And then we had played a game out in the road. We came back. We had our meetings to break down the film. And they said, coach needs to see you. And Joanne was on a plane going to Fort McMurray, B.C. for some event. And so he says, you got claimed by Hamilton. And so what do you mean? He says, well, and he explained what had happened. And they tried to hide me because I had a minor, minor thigh injury or something. And I had a buddy of mine call me out of the blue saying, hey, how are you doing? I said, good. He says, how are you banged up? Say, I feel fine. I'll be, I'll be out maybe in a, another week. And next day, I'm, I'm, I'm property of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and that was their way of getting revenge. Hamilton said, "Okay, you're going to do that. We're going to take one of your key players, one of your guys." And that's how I ended up at Hamilton. Yeah, see, I didn't uh, even realize that too. And that that tells you too, right? First year coaching, you're you're also the GM and all that stuff, and so you don't even understand how that those kind of things can affect your football team. Is like, okay, you don't know that rule. <laughs> and, I, and, and then I, I was hell bent on making sure that I became when I learned from the experience and became a better football player because I still had lots in me that I wanted to play and uh, I scored the touchdown on that Eastern Eastern semifinal and yeah. I felt I felt great that I scored it but I also felt badly deep because we knew there was a bunch of guys on that team on that Ottawa right. team that had been through a lot right right and that was a pretty good football team. If, if it doesn't snow, we probably lose that game. Well, they had the best defense in the league, right? They had some – Snipes, Stuman, 
in 92? Yeah. They had a good yeah, one. Yeah. But then again, that Winnipeg team was still pretty good. No, but they had Burris. Remember they – because I left the Cleveland Rooms to deal with me, and they signed Burris, and I went to Hamilton. Yeah, you came to and Hamilton. Where the but defense yeah. was still good in Winnipeg, but their offense was just average. Of no, the average, offense, yeah. Right. We, the I offense, mean, they, they offense in 93 – the offense in 93 had me and Dunnigan and Wilcox. Alfin. And Alfin. Alfin. So right. they was good enough to go to the Grey Cup with a defense, but not the offense. Yeah. Because our because our Hamilton team, right? I went to Hamilton because, you know, he gave me big money. The mm-hmm. Weavers were trying to lowball ball me. Uh, what y'all gave me big money to go to Hamilton. Yeah. And then uh, we the Hamilton's 3-15. and 15. I get there. We go 11-7 and seven to Eastern Final. And then, yeah. and then the Hamilton's going, hey. We think Don McPherson can do the job. Okay, go on. Do you think yeah. so? I'm going Edmonton. <laughs> I, be- I became a free agent, and I was in BC with a contract in front of me. And I said, I'm going to go back to Hamilton to see if we can finish our business. And we got – everything fell apart. We're at training camp, two days. We weren't allowed to cut our spats. We weren't allowed to cut our spats, right? Mm-hmm. Because we had no money for tape. So you couldn't cut the tape off. I'm telling you, dude. We're a boring pen. So this, is in, this is in Hamilton. Yeah. Man. And lunch was a sub and a sand, a sub, a bag of chips, and a pop. In training camp? In training yes. Camp. <laughs> Guys had diarrhea day three. The whole team was shitting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you, man. It was like, man, that was, and that, and that's when you start to realize, like, okay, man, man, I left Edmonton to come here. I went, you left here, yeah. left Ottawa to come here. Oh, yeah. my goodness, man. Hey, Adam Rita says hi to all you guys. All the guys. Yeah. Hey, I was watching him on Facebook. I think he's he's somewhere in Europe. That was my favorite. No, he's in town. I think he's in town now. Is he in town? Okay. Yeah. That was my favorite. Okay. That was my favorite. Wow. Adam Rita, Adam Rita will walk in the huddle. Adam Rita will walk in the film room and say, Hey, quarterback, if anybody walk on him, play him one on one, just throw him the damn ball. I don't care what the play is. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> <Adam>. <laughs> he said they dumb enough to do it. That's what he used to tell Matt. If they dumb enough to do it. You throw it to his ass. He said, "In any anywhere inside the 30, yeah. he said, you look to throw him the ball first before you hand the ball off. Yeah, and right. I, at, I used to walk up and look at the cornerback and look at Matt, and Matt look at me, and I go, choo! Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, Tim I Jesse Adam, be looking for Adam, the ball. Adam, Tim- Adam was the kind of coach, too, is like, you know, he'll, you'll have your game plan on the day before, and then he'll be in the shitter. He'll come back out with 10 plays. Like, what's what's it? Hey, right. we can do this. We can do this. I said, Adam, we even practice these things, man. Uh, if, if I'm in Winnipeg with those receivers, I'm Tim Jesse. I'm just going to stand. I'm, I'm going to wear my leather pants underneath my game pants because I'm not going to be busy that day. I might as well just leave the stadium, take the pants off, and go. He's a Jesse. Yeah. Hey, David, tell us what you're up to. Where are you and what you're up to these days? Uh, like I said uh, earlier this year, before this pandemic, not you, Damon, was... David, David. Oh, David, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. I'm sorry, Damon. You know, you you're the quarterback. You got to just take charge. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I just heard Dave. I heard I heard D. <laughs> you got to say Super Dave, man. D's who? Right. Super hey, Dave. Hey, I've been I've been in the steel industry for the last 22 years. Wow. So, and with this pandemic, I'm at work now. See me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. so I've been in this, I've been a general manager in the steel company for the last ten years, and uh, it's good living, pretty yeah. good. You yeah. know, you just get to go out and use your personality and drum up business. Yeah. It's just like it's like football, man. You just go make sure your customers need get what they need, and you go on about your yeah. business. Wow. So it's been pretty good. So sales and and sales is just using your personality. Yeah. The best right. salespeople are the people who just can talk. You talk yeah. and listen. Sales is about listening and giving the customer what they need, and that's yeah. it. I would love – I'm like Damon. I'd love to be back in football. Yeah. When I went to that Grey Cup, I got some Joneses. I was like, man, I would love <laughs> to be a GM or assistant yeah. GM. No, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, hey, think about this, Damon. And I talk about this with my, my big brother all the time because you see it. You watch the NFL draft, and you look at the guys, and you go – who are these people drafting these people? Didn't yeah. you just watch them play college? He was right. sorry in college, and you just drafted him in the first round. <laughs> right. <laughs> you think he gonna? You think because he ran fast on the clock that? Yeah. Now he gonna be a good player? Mm-hmm. But you know, one thing that that I learned when I was in the CFL was a lot of them GMs have no fucking clue what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> 
Damon, you just go to Hamilton and you play great, and then all of a sudden you think Don McPherson is going to be good? Okay, but you got Damon Allen as a quarterback, proven great cup winner. Right. And now you're going to bring him in? That, 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 that's, Canada was always weird to me. It was, that was all, I never understood that mentality. Yeah, those, are the number, thing, and those are the things you use for motivation. Okay, what time play you guys? <laughs> right. Like, like, okay, if you got Damon and they got they got Hobart and Damon's balling, yeah. Hobart's okay, but now you're going to say, okay, I want Hobart and we're going to get rid of Damon. So now you think Hobart's going to play better in your system than Damon just played? Yeah. I, yeah. I never understood that. Well, Hobart had some success, and then he became – it was sort of a cult of personality and what he represented to football fans. And, uh, and I don't think the fans necessarily connected with Damon, even though he threw for over 4,000, and he ran for over 1,000. Right. right. But even – what I'm just – I don't want to just pick on Hobart. You don't no. say Damon no. or Tracy or anybody. Yeah. It's just like, this dude is balling, that guy's balling, so why would you swap them? Yeah. They're the same guy. If he's going to throw for 4,000 – and like Tracy can run for a thousand, right? And Damon can go for a four thousand and run for a thousand. You got chemistry with that guy, yeah, Just right. Build around, build around that guy. Don't swap the guys. And swapping the guys. Now I want to get this back to leadership and coaches. Swapping the guys means that the message is the margin for error is so narrow, so thin that as soon as you screw up, I'm pulling you. So you're not really going to be exactly excited about going in to compete, and you have really no reason to compete because you don't trust the the leadership and and leadership is authenticity. It's relationship building. It's That's knowing, right. yeah, know that if, as soon as you become a leader, the first thing you got to tell your team is, listen, we're going to have some good days, but the crap's going to hit the fan. And we know that everybody knows it. And how we respond when the crap hits the fan will determine what kind of team we're going right. to be. No, no, absolutely. And like I said, when you, one thing when I stepped out away from the game, yeah. Uh, I realized how detailed I became from mm -hmm. looking at the game from outside in, uh, you know, what, knowing what you know, when you're in it, you only, it's only so much because you're in the thick of it. Yeah. But when you step away from it, you actually see a much bigger picture, right? And mm -hmm. then you start to be more detailed in your teaching and all those different things. But did you have like to learn, all, Damon, though? Basic, did you have to, down, say it again? Did, did you have to learn that it wasn't about you when you became that leader? No, well, know what I mean? Like, to, like you can me, you can put up your yards and you can throw the ball and do all right, kinds no, of stuff. But I understand, like, because I like I said, at the end of the day, you know, I was in the mindset of, yeah. you know, team win championships, right? You know, I've never seen a quarterback, you know, sit on his back throw for five hundred yards, right? I yeah. just never seen it. What just happened? Okay, David's there. We yeah, lost, it's just the internet. No problem. There we yeah. go. There he is. I was saying I've never seen a quarterback like on his back. Go yeah. for 500 yards. So I understand the the importance of offensive line protection, receivers catching the football, catching mm -hmm. and running. I mean, so in, in that sense, I've always had that because, like I said, um, especially in the game of football, I mean, there's no one guy can really dominate the game unless you have help from your other teammates. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And David, you're a two-time All-American at University of Illinois. You're doing your thing now. Great, great career. And uh, I can't help but ask. Uh, How's Steve doing? Steve's doing good. Hey, I want to. I want. I want to ask you a question. I want to go back to what Damon just said about the, the leadership. Go ahead. Everybody knows the quarterback is a, is is the leader of the team, right? Mm -hmm. So, my mentality was: I always I always said I was never a leader of the team. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be a leader of the team because the leader yeah. of the team, you gotta you gotta keep everybody in line. You gotta yeah. keep everybody on the same right. page. You gotta, you got to talk to these persons, talk to that person. I wasn't that guy. Yeah. I'm that guy to say, okay, let's win. I'm going to play my ass off for you and everybody right. else. But I'm that guy that I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to win my matchup every time. Yeah. I'm going to kill my guy. So when you need me, you come to me. Right. But other but than Dave, that. Dave, tell her what you tell me every, every game you say. <laughs> 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 Dave just tell me every hey every time we play the game. He said, "You want to win? Throw, Throw me the ball. ball. <laughs> Throw me the ball. <laughs> Throw me the ball." I don't know what's going on through your head right now, Damon. A lot of stuff, scheme stuff. Let's simplify it. Throw me the ball. 
That's hey, what he said. Every, hey, every Earl Winfield was the same we way. We Earl Winfield. You Earl win. Winfield. Yeah, Earl Winfield Earl was not the best route runner, but one on one compete. May plays. The pearl may play. plays. Oh, yeah. that that was super Dave, bro. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. yeah. Big hand. Yeah. So, I, so the leader, I, like, cause like, cause to be a leader of the team, you got to always be leading the team. You're right. You're right. Right, but on Tuesday and Wednesday, and we play on Thursday or Friday. Yeah. Hey, man, leave me alone. Yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to go out here and get me a little sweat in, but I ain't trying to work too hard. Yeah. I right. know the game. I know the game now. Mm-hmm. Right, I know my body. I know how to be prepared mentally and physically. Right. Yeah. So that's why I never I, like I I can't be the leader of guys because you know Matt Matt Dunnigan used to look at me sometime on Tuesday and Matt hated me on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> hated me. You're right. Hated me because mm-hmm. Matt was a 24 seven. Right, 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 right. I'm like, <laughs> on Monday, I'm going out on the field. I got on the grass. I got on turf shoes and no tape. Yeah, and I used right. to look at me and go, Dave. And I used to look and go, it's Monday. Yeah. We play Thursday. <laughs> right. Throw the ball to him. <laughs> Right. Or, or, or yeah, hey, the, hey, Ken, hey Dunning, Ken. Dunning was like, ah, 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 like the hey, whole hey, time, Ken. bro. Ken, I'd run a route, right? Yeah. And Matt would throw the ball. And it would bounce. And he would look and I and I'd run back to the huddle and I go, I got that one. I got that one. <laughs> that was a good throw. And he'd look at me and be pissed off. And I'd say, You threw it right. Just relax. I got that. That's where it's supposed to be. Yeah. I know my speed. I get that ball. Don't worry about it. Just Calm down, it's Monday. <laughs> but you, you you became a pro, though. You became a pro. Yes. Right? Because yes. in college, the coach is like, jump, and you say, how high? Well, in right? college, in, in college, college, my coach taught me, my coach taught me how to read everything and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So by the right. time, by, and then I went, and Ken, Ken, what you guys don't know was, when I was on the Raiders playing with Damon's big brother in 87, Yeah. right? I went against Mike Haynes every day. <laughs> He's going to Mike kill you Haynes, or make you better. Mike, make you better. Mike, you'd be running a route. You eight yards in a route, and Mike Haynes will be telling you what you got to do. Okay, you got to take four more steps before you cut to the post. Here it comes. You better break. Break. Yeah. I left that dude. And I, I would practice with that dude every day. Go, Mike, how you read this? And he'd yeah. tell you how he read it. And he'd tell you what you're going to do. He'd be looking at you, covering you, and looking at the tight end yep. and the quarterback and go, the tight end broke. Okay, so now you're going to either run a post or an end route. Which one? I'm going to jump on the end, so you better be running a post. This and, is why you run it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you had, to, you had to figure out ways that gave you a competitive edge, that margin where you had to dictate terms. So whether it was a step here, whether it was – Absolutely. I would ask, I would ask him, what do I need to do to get you to stop looking at the quarterback? Mm-hmm. He said, you got to give me a different move to make me think about it. Yeah. And I would go, right. okay, so if I'm running this, I need to step here. So you have to open your hips. He go, yeah. Yeah. Cause that's then why I'm, it's so, that's why it's so important when you have a guy who's looking in the backfield and trying to cover you is to get behind that where yeah, he lose yeah. vision of you, right? Yeah. And yes. So as long as you stay stay in the route of the same, yes. that's what I said. You got to come off stemming. Yeah. You got to come yeah. off stemming hard and yeah. straighten up. And then now, when he loses sight of where you are and look yes. in the backfield, he got to get out of that mold. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this then: practice is important because your scheme and blitz adjustments is really important. You need to know yeah. if they're trying to punch us in the face, what's going to be our counter punch? All yeah. that. But really, isn't a lot of it about? One, figuring out a way to hone your craft. And two, yes. being open to other professionals who have been there and done it. Because as soon as you think you figured it out, the next moment is when you find out you don't know jack shit. Well, you got to continue. It has to be a mindset of continue to learn. Like I said, I was yeah. still learning, still learning uh, small details of the game. That will help me in my even in my 23rd year. So I never yeah. stopped learning because, yeah. like I said, you may you meet a new coach, a new guest coach, and he may have some insight. He's like, okay, that, that doesn't make sense to the game. And so I'm gathering information, yeah. right? To see, I know my skill set. I know what I'm capable of doing. Uh, but the, the the more I know mentally and all that stuff, now the game becomes slower, like a yeah. slow motion tape now. And so for me, is you never stop learning. That's, uh, that's forever. Right. Um, hey, Ken. Yeah. Ken. 
Now, when I said on Monday and Tuesday when I'm jogging, yeah, I've watched film for four hours. That's just it. Right. Don't mistake the jog for not working. Right. So right. I knew I knew I could watch film for 15 minutes on a cornerback and know his 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 strengths and his flaws. Yeah. Then I would go find a tape of another receiver who I wanted to see and see what they did. Covered. I would yeah. go watch him and see how he's covering him. Yeah. Then I'd go watch certain routes. I'd watch right. a game just for a route. Okay, I want to yeah. see him how he covered this route. Yeah. And then I knew before Monday started, I knew how to beat my guy mm -hmm. all day long. And yep. then I was just mentally doing that while I'm jogging. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I was always getting ready and I was learning because in Canada, hell, they throw up a DB on you that you ain't never seen before yeah. in a heartbeat. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, right. Yeah, you, you got you got no history on the guy, and right. now you have to figure out. And and right. you learn from other receivers. You say, boy, if he would have just taken that extra step. Yes. If he would have just gave him a little bit of – if he would have just stemmed, did this. Yeah. Yes. So when I would go, when I'd go against the guy that I didn't know too well, yeah. I would run a pass pattern on him on a, on a, on a running play. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? I'd run something on him to see how he's going to react. Yeah. Right. And then, and then even on a play, say Damon calls a play. It's it, Yeah. And I know by the defense where the ball is going to go and how they play defenses. Yeah. So I would, I might even tell Damon, don't throw me the ball on this play. You're setting yeah. him up. Yeah. No matter what you do, don't throw me the ball. Because I'm going to do something crazy on this play. But again, I'm going to make sure I'm out of my halfback's route. Yeah. Out of everybody's route. Yeah. But I'm going to do something crazy just to see how he reacts. You so want to see, set him up. Set you want to you, yeah. you want to yeah. see a card in his hand. Yes. You yeah. want to start counting cards. Yes. That's what that's what uh, Brian Kelly was really good at. Uh, yeah. When I played with him, I first came to Edmonton, dude. He was like on running plays. He was already like doing radical releases and all that yeah. stuff to see the reaction of the corner. And so when he ever, whenever he said, "Hey, right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> this he is the post okay. corner right now." Yeah. Dude, he said, I've been setting him up for three three, three quarters already. He is ready. <laughs> Here, here's the funny yeah. thing. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. David. Go ahead. That's Brian Kelly telling Damon what I told Damon. Yeah. Throw me the damn ball right yeah. now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here's the funny thing. Let's connect the dots. Steve Goldman now is the head coach here in Ottawa. And you guys haven't come to Ottawa yet. I was there the year previous. And it's me and Wilcox and Danny Johnson, the, the, the young receiving core. What's that? The, the the CFL team? Yep. So I don't think you were here. You came. We had a year with Goldie. Maybe you were here at the time. I'm not sure. He wasn't here. He, he wasn't here. He wasn't here. And, and Goldman took me and Wilcox, who was the first round draft pick, and Danny Johnson, who was the other slot back out of Regina. And he put in a tape, VHS tape. And it was the Edmonton Eskimos one-on-one. -on -one. Sin Carr, Kelly, Fryer, I think, was in there. All those. Tommy Scott. Yeah. And what they did was a it was a turning point for me as a receiver because everything as a receiver for me was er, er, right? Right. Everything was and all of a sudden Brian Kelly's running the out route, but his first steps are that way. Right. And Stanley Blair's going, I gotta chase him. So Brian beats him. Now he runs the same stem and Stanley goes, I'm not gonna fool this time. I'm gonna wait on the out. And then Brian runs the dig. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like and, and be able to make sure you control dictate terms and if they do something that you're you're ready to counter punch that that's brian kelly telling him you're a better athlete than me than me i'm smarter than but you. i'm smarter than you <laughs> right bro dude he said a hey, hey, uh, uh dave he, he he did this to uh one of the corners like i mean i seen the one-on-one -on -one. i was like okay yeah. He, he gets tight, and you know the hat. The ball's on the left hash, so he's tight. So he might be three yards outside the hash, right? Yeah. No, no, where he's out out. <laughs> no, he knows the the DBs. Like the tighter he gets, he knows he's going to go on the outside. So he what does, he does, yeah. he gets tight, and then he stems extremely hard, wide, right? And then he straightens up, and then runs a hook on him. Pow! Catches yeah. it. The <laughs> DB's still out wide, right? Yeah. So he runs the same exact route, still wide, straighten up and run a post and DB sitting on the hook. <laughs> like, yeah. oh. Steptoe was great at that. I loved working with Steptoe because he was he was so smart. 
athletic, but he was also smart. We can see, okay, we're going to run this, this change of combination on a little bit. Yeah. But that's you, where... look, you look at our, you look at our game plan, you look at the plays back in the day, most of it was balanced. We had some trips, a that's little right. bit of ace, but now you watch how guys are moving around. And no wonder defenses were so strong back in the day. Cause we can't, I think offenses were kind of predictable in a way right. back in the day. So you had to out athlete, you had to outsmart when it would cover one man to man. Right. So. Cause everything was more about protecting, protecting the quarterback back in the day. Right now it's yeah. a lot more spread, but now there's a, they take a, a better advantage with motioning yeah. and cross motioning and all those things to get people uh, beat out of leverage now. So, yeah. but that's pretty right. much the difference what they're seeing on offense now. It's yeah. still the same game, you know, same route combination, but now the motioning is really important part of, yeah. uh, and when you're not doing it, you're so easy to read now. That's <laughs> crazy. Hey, David, why is he not coaching? Who? DA. Why is he, he not is. in the CFL coaching? Well, when you get those guys and you get somebody with that, that resume. Yeah. And I think they feel threatened. And they shouldn't mm -hmm. feel threatened because a guy like Damon sitting next to you while you game plan something. He's seen everything that you can possibly think okay. of. Yeah. So he would actually help you, but I right. think they feel threatened and then they don't want that person in the room. Yeah. That's the person that coach would be a better coach if Damon's in that room. Because even after the guys leave, yeah, he can X and O with Damon. And Damon could probably tell him how he can make his system even better. Right. Because he knows what the defense is going to do. Mm -hmm. He already knows what the what the quarterback is looking at. Yeah. And if you design something different or put in a different wrinkle, Damon could tell that guy how that defense is going to react. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just ego and 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 knowing that you're not the smartest dude in the room. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. That with Don Matthews and all the great coaches, and what they're able to do is do – like think about when Hugh Campbell was a coach in Edmonton when they were winning those five championships. Mm -hmm. Do you know who the coaching staff was? Doug Don Matthews. In there. Don Matthews. Uh, Cal Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> they were all on his staff. Yeah, look what Cal been able to do in Winnipeg. Look what Don Matthews was able to do, yeah. right? On, and on song, it was like more guys. You was like, damn, he was on that staff too. Yeah. Like three of the greatest CFL coaches were on that Hugh Campbell staff in Edmonton. A great coach connected with us. Adam Rita says, good to see my guys. And then he says, say it the way it is, David. Never been shy. And then he says, two guys that need to be in the league somehow, both you guys. Well, it's, no, it's, absolutely, man. He didn't say that about me. He didn't say that about me. Go ahead. I'd, I'd be a GM. I'd be yeah. a GM, right? Yeah. And, 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 and say if I'm the GM, right, and I hire a coach, Yeah. I'm going to tell him, you, you got a quarterback, you, who's your golf as a coordinator? Yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. You like his style? Boom. Okay. No, if, if you get the job and you're going, that's going to be your coordinator, you go hire Damon to be your quarterback coach. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes if you ever get stuck, you fucking listen to him. <laughs> right. No, I no, absolutely do. Listen yeah. to him. He will, yeah. he will guide you to where you need to go because everything that you think about or you looking at yeah. or you would even dream about, he's already beat it. Yeah. Right? So wow. he can tell your quarterback, this is what's going to happen. This is should, what ha should what's going to mm -hmm. happen, mm -hmm. but this is probably what's going to happen. And if this happens, this is what you do. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Turn the chess game into checkers. Yeah. They're going to do this. We're going to do this. And when we do this, they're going to do this. And this. That we're going, then we're going to knock their ass out. With this. And you just right? said, so you're, you're steps ahead and you yeah. anticipate what they're going to do to stop it. And like, I mean, I, I mean, I got a, a rock combination. Like for the short side of the field, because most of the time, you, what you see on the short side of the field? Hold or cut, right? Yeah, hold or cut. I got a rock combination that would destroy, like instantly, like right now. Like, and the guys, because now I'm in, I'm in the mindset of 
yes, there's combinations, there's fundamentals of triangle reads and all that stuff, right? You're creating that triangle and stuff, but how radical can I be in the route running now to get to that same fu fundamental aspect? Yeah, yeah. Right? And then that's where you have to be very creative with the foundation and how you read it, the fundamental aspect of creating the triangle is still there. Yeah. But now you got to be more radical now. How do you attack the triangle? Hey, hey Ken, you mentioned, you mentioned Adam Rita. Yeah. You watch an NFL game now or a CFL game now, and you, you hear the announcers going, oh, that's a great throw behind. That's a great throw behind. Adam Rita invented that in 1988. Man, yeah. Right. Masadi, up, Masadi made big money doing that. Yeah. Bonefish made a career, bunch of money. Light years, bro. What we yeah. see in the NFL today, they've been doing that in the CFL for years. I mean, the yeah. NFL. Yeah. Like empty yeah. set and, you know, and, you know, five receivers, you know, yeah. screen yeah. game and, you know, shovels and all that stuff. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Time flies when you're having fun. I don't remember scores of the games. I know we won some games. We lost some games. But, boy, I remember the people like I met them yesterday. And I count you to David Williams. The great ones, no, Hall of Famer, always, man. Always all that stuff. Yeah. I'm glad you connected. I'm glad you connected with us. I'm glad you're safe. Send my best to Steve. I love Steve. Uh, boy, it's too bad it didn't work out for him in Ottawa here because he was he was a solid receiver. I, yeah, I really he was enjoyed watching talented him too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, Ken. One yeah. day, one day. That's my boy Damon. I love Damon. One day, I want to be on a show with Adam. That dude, I love yeah. that dude. I'm booking him next. I think I'm trying to book him next week. Hey, maybe we'll maybe we'll come on. Let us know. You guys want you want to join in? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, hey, if they had a great cup, Damien, you going to? Uh, can you go on to uh, Saskatchewan if it's on? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going. Damon's gonna go. I, I have three kids, ten, nine, and eight. I ain't going anywhere but to the corner store. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be cold because I went to the last great cup in Saskatchewan. It was freezing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay, borrow, borrow Tim Jesse's leather pants, you'll be fine. This is a PG <laughs> show, so this is a PG show. Yeah, we so, gotta keep yeah, it clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, stay safe, David. Stay well. Love you, brother. Thank you for joining us. Uh you too, you know, man. I'm glad we're connected. Hey, thank, thanks thank for, God for on, Facebook. Uh, right? Thank God thanks for, for Facebook. We can get connected. Yeah. Hey Ken, sorry I'm late. I was just entranced and watching our dumb president talk. And I was like, did you just say that out loud, you moron? You know what? <laughs> you probably thought it was Monday and you didn't get <laughs> taped up. <Yeah. laughs> I, looked at, I looked at my phone and saw a text on and I was like, shit. Cause I, I just had a meeting with the office. So yeah. I was here. Hey, I'm glad I'm, you're here. I'm sorry, man. Hey. Thanks for having me, Ken. You got it. All, All right, right, bro. I'll, take care. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later, now. Super Dave. Dave right, Allen, going. nothing but love. All right. That was I'm fun. glad I missed Craig Ellis. Craig Ellis be talking about nothing. <laughs> 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 David, later. take care. All, All right, right, take care. Send him on his way. way. And, All right, guys. And, take care. Thank you. Bye. And, and David, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm meantime, glad you're safe let, and well. Hey, let me know uh, about uh, Adam ne next week. Yeah, it's funny how, and, and I wanted to get into this story real quick because I didn't get a chance to touch base. And I shared it with you before uh, we we had our conversation was that when my dad, my dad took my sisters to go watch at that time, Cassius Clay training in Toronto. Right. My dad walked in and again, my dad's an athlete. He'd seen some athletes and then he saw Cassius Clay. And his first thought was that was the most magnificent athlete he'd ever see physically, skill wise, the whole bit. Right. And it, I remember him telling me the story at the kitchen table. And it always stuck with me because a lot of people looked up to my dad because he was an athlete, right. but my dad looked up to that moment. And when I got to Ottawa, I'm trying to figure out my way, and then you showed up and started doing things athletically. Right. And I remember thinking, nine's my cash is clay. <laughs> right. Oh. That's, that's my cash is clay. Because you did stuff athletically. You know, the DBs challenged you to a 40 yard sprint and you whooped their ass. Right. And you made yeah. it look so easy. And, and people say, well, geez, you know, Marcus, all this, and Marcus is a great athlete, but uh, to do what you did athletically in a league, wow. <laughs>